This video is entitled Basic Font Styles and is a companion piece to the book So You Want to Learn to Use HTML and CSS, Chapter 2. I'm James Imbrano, PhD from Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this presentation. In this video, we'll be covering the new style font family. We'll be using one of the five standard, we'll be talking about the five standard font families of serif, sans serif, cursive, fantasy, and monospace. We'll be using a specific font and then besides one of those five generics and then fall back to one of the generics. And I'll show you the font size and how to change the size of your fonts. Fonts. We're all very familiar with fonts. We use them in our, our, our word processing documents. We see them everywhere we learn. Typography is a whole interesting art and, and even a science to it, trying to, to, to ev ev evoke emotions and all kinds of other things. Let's just talk about some fonts. Um, basically, in HTML, all fonts belong into five kind of generic families. And you have to know these five generic families and their names. The first generic family is called the serif family, or S-E-R-I-F. A serif in a font is that little curly Q at the end. You can see up at the top above me the word serif, how it's got the little tail on both ends of the S and how it has the little tail on the top of the F. Those are serifs, and serif is a French word. Um, Times New Roman is a very common serif font. Another font family is called the sans serif, S-A-N-S dash S-E-R-I-F, and sans is the French word for without. So sans dash serif fonts are all of the families that are crisp and clean and don't have those little tails. Um, a very common uh, sans serif font is Arial, on Windows boxes, or Helvetica is another very, very common uh, sans serif font. There's a font family called the cursive font, and it's just exactly what it sounds like. It looks like cursive handwriting. The fantasy font family is a family of fonts that are decorative and playful. Um, there are a whole lot of them, uh, Gaudi and, and, and uh, lots of others, but the fantasy font that I have here, I forget its name, but uh, we'll see those fantasy fonts. And then the last font family you need to know is the monospace font. And unlike sans serif that has a dash, monospace does not have a dash. And monospace letters are all equally spaced. They're monospaced. Because if you notice in the fo uh, fant uh, fonts above us, um, the other four, each letter is a different width. So a uh, capital W is usually the widest letter, and the lowercase i is the skinniest letter, and you can see how the, the letters are all different spaces. But with a monospace font, every letter is the same, which makes it nice for reports and computer code and, and that kind of stuff. One of the most common uh, monospace font is the Courier New font. It would be nice on our web pages to be able to use any font we want, and we can. When we're defining a font on in our CSS, in our, in our style, we can define font names and base it upon the names that are loaded on our computer. But what happens for the user who's on their phone and doesn't have that specific font loaded, or who's on a Macintosh or a Windows box or a Linux box, or is using a different web browser. Um, you've got to be very cautious when you're using fonts to include a fallback font in case it doesn't find your specific font you want, maybe a, a, this, uh, this isn't the same, but it's, it's close. And then it always include a, a, one of the five generic font families, so that regardless of what's available on the web browser, um, the user will at least see one of those five families. When you're using a font, and the five fallbacks are sans serif, serif, cursive, fantasy, and monospace, if your font name on your computer contains a space or contains numbers, you need to include it in quotes when you're putting it in the style. 
they're not really necessary for most fonts, but just in good, good form, go ahead and do that. Let's see an example of a font family style. So here are two HTML statements with inline style. One of them is a header uh, that says nice clean header. And I've said that I want it to be of the font family, Liberation Sans, comma, Arial, comma, Sans Serif. So what this is telling the web browser is if you have Liberation Sans, which is a font I like, use that. If you don't have that, go ahead and just use Arial because, well, most people have it and it's close. And if you don't have Arial, just use some sans serif font. So it'll be nice and clean and not have the little, not have the little, little points, the serifs. The next, um, the next one is a paragraph of text. And you can see that in the font family definition, in the font family style, I say, okay, I want you to use Bajas 95. And I have to have that in quotes because the number 95 um, is, is in it, and it, it is required to have quotes around a font with a number in it. Or use Cooper Black, which is a nice fantasy font. And if you don't have Cooper Black, use Broadway, which is really similar to Bajas. And if you don't have any of those, just go ahead and use the default standard fantasy font. Um, notice that in the first style, I have style equal double quotes around the whole thing. In the second style, I use single quotes to wrap the style and double quotes to wrap the font name. I could have done that the other way around and used double quotes around the style and single quotes around the font name. And so if you've got to have a quoted string within an embedded style, be sure to use the opposite quote, either double quote or single quote, inside a single quote or double quote. Another thing that we can change when we're dealing with fonts are the font size. And you can see here I've got a couple of font size styles. One setting the font size to 200%, so it would be double the normal size, 200%. You can set it to 50% if you want it smaller, you know. Um, you can also use an absolute um, size, like here I use 16 point in the second paragraph, in the second HTML statement. Remember that a point is 1 72nd of an inch when it's printed on a piece of paper. Now that comes from the that comes from the old days when they were doing lead letters and putting them in racks and printing presses back a long time ago. One seventy second of an inch was about as thin as you could pound a little sheet of lead the space between letters. And that's where the word, that's where the measurement of point or one seventy second of an inch comes from. You can also define your font size as double X small, X small, small, medium, large, X large, and double X large. You can say inherit, which means that it would have the same size as the parent. You can use points, percents, and there are lots of other measurements you can use within CSS, but those are the most common and those are the ones you really need to know at this point. There are a lot more font styles that I haven't covered in, in, this, in this discussion. There's the font style, the font variant, the font weight, the font stretch, the line height. There's even a way that you can define family, size, style variant, weight, stretch, and height all in one giant CSS statement called the font statement. You'll need to go online and look at the reference materials um, to see how, how those work. I, they're just beyond this brief introduction. So here's an example HTML document over here. Here's an example over there. Yeah, there's an example HTML document with um, uh, with the fonts with styles, with the font styles. Notice that I applied the first style to the body, which says, okay, for this body HTML document, I want the font family to be Oracle, Arial, Helvetica, or Sans Serif. So I want one of those two specific Sans Serif fonts. If you don't have it, use a generic Sans Serif font. And notice how I applied that to the body. So every, every element within the body 
has that style applied. So the H1 bought from body um, shows up at the top, and you can see it in our in our little display. On uh, H2, I changed the font style to Book Antigua Latino serif uh, and and uh, a serif font, and I also then say make it 400%. And you can see up above that that I've uh, by combining those two styles together with a semicolon between them, you can see that I've uh, made that one tag, a serif font, didn't change the body. So when the paragraph comes out right below that has a color style, you can see that the red paragraph comes out in the serif font it inherited from the parent. This concludes this brief introductory video. Uh, this presentation is copyright 2020 by James Zimrano, Ph.D. You can contact me at jim at renejm.com. Remember, this work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, share-alike, 4.0 international license, and I would like to say thank you for watching.